This is the Central Coast we want to see. Beautiful, pristine, and safe. But for many, this is no paradise. Thousands along the Central Coast have no place to sleep at night and no roof over their heads. Join me, Robert Griffith, in an investigation into homelessness in paradise. Many of us have a very stereotyped view of what homelessness looks like, but we don't realize that sometimes homelessness can be right in front of us. I never thought that I would be in this position, you know, being homeless. I went through a bad divorce, and I moved out here. We had family here, some cousins. So I moved in with them, with my children. And about a week after we got here, they put the house up um, as a vacation rental, so we all had to move out. So I'd already had a job here, and my parents actually live in Cambria. So I couldn't afford the gas to get back and forth from work from Cambria to Morro Bay every day. It would be more money than I was actually making. So I sent my children to live with my parents and just couldn't find anything due to the economy that I could afford. So I was living in my car with everything that I owned that I could fit in there. And I spent a lot of time on friends' couches and you know, not trying to put anybody out. I ended up you know, sleeping in my car for at least a couple months. So minus all my belongings, which were in the car at the time, um, pretty much, I only had a certain amount of room to sleep, you know, in his car. So the back seat was it. So I pretty much smooshed all of my things out of the way and slept in a very small four foot little space. This is it. This is the very small space I had to sleep in. Um, it was a whole lot more packed with things at the time. So probably a little less space. So pretty much I would have my pillow and a little blanket and curl up in a ball and this was it, home sweet home for two and a half months and I definitely needed a chiropractor <laughs> after I got done living in the back of my car. If I couldn't find a bathroom, which I usually could find a bathroom, but you know, if I was in a hurry or what have you, I always had a bottle of water in my car because I needed to brush my teeth. Um, the only good thing about living in your car is you usually have very good lighting for makeup, which is, you know, optimal. <laughs> and I had my little mirror here, and it has its own little lighting, and I'd get ready for work in the front seat of my car. Um, very isolated. Um, you know, it was rock bottom for me. You know, I, I'd owned a house at a time. You know, I had a family, you know, and, and my children with me. It was the first time we'd ever been apart. Um, it was pretty much the most difficult time in my life, you know, and then having to get up every day and go to work and put on a happy face was very, very difficult. Over the last two years, we've seen approximately the same total number of homeless, about 3,800 countywide, and uh, about a quarter of them are in South County, about a third in San Luis Obispo, and a third in the North County, and the remaining, I think it's about 4% or so in the coastal areas. Approximately between 13 to 16 percent veterans in the county, and that's pretty consistent between um, most of our studies. There, there are quite a few number of kids. There, it ranges kind of between 35 and 50 percent are children, and some people, some of the children are doubled and tripled up. So not all of them are literally homeless, but there's pretty consistent numbers that we have a large number of children in this county, and almost 40 percent in both of the homeless counts show that a lot of the homeless are from the area, so it's largely not a transient population, and many others have friends or family from the area. A long time ago, people were more, more friendly because I think there was less people. Now with the rat race, there's so many people that it's like, they can't possibly know everyone, so basically, they have their agenda, you have your agenda, but. Homeless people get the bad rap, you know, and rap. a lot of it's because a good percentage are drug and alcohol addicted or offenders or like it or whatever. It's basically their, their flavor. And uh, the people see that, so as soon as they see a homeless person, they think, you know, is he a mean drunk? Is he a happy drunk? You know, is he hooked on heroin? Is he smoking? 
about, you know, what is, what is he going, you know, right now? Why is he acting that way? But when you're homeless, you're, you're, you're the audience, you're the stage for everyone. I mean, there's no place to go. There's, it's either public or private property, but wherever you go, you don't own it. So basically a majority is privately owned. So you're pretty much front stage 24 hours, 27 days a week. Um, really it's like no fault of anybody but my own. It was a complete choice. But um, it was just out of kind of disillusionment with the entire system where, I mean, the cards were stacked against me. I mean, I graduated high school homeless and I didn't want to go in to college and just end up in debt with a degree that I might not be able to use, you know. And so just from there, I mean, I, I was on and off, I'd get employment and having a cheap apartment and everything. And, but yeah, I mean, I've never felt like, you know, that I, that the government owes me something, that anybody owes me anything. That's like one, I mean, that's all I really want is just a steady employment and then from there, I can work my way up again. Well, most of them, you know, uh, to me it seems like their depression and anxiety and stress has just uh, made them, uh, they seem more like vegetables to me. I know quite a few of them. They really don't have much to say except, hi, do you have a dollar, do you have a dime? I'm hungry or something, you know. But, uh, it's, it's just hard to see them that way. If I have a little money from collecting cans, I give it to them, you know, help mm -hmm. them out. And uh, so, so you you go out and collect cans. I take. Uh, yeah. Is it and they get uh, money for recycling them? Yeah. Plus, they get a lot of food out of the trash cans behind uh, Smart and Fine and other places. You know, they empty their trucks. They get the food and they take it home. They eat it. Finding jobs is that a hard thing if you're homeless? Well, it's a hard thing whether you're homeless or not because uh, of the economy, as you know, and not just that. It's who you know, how good of not what what you have, what you've learned in school in this town, you have to be bilingual. They people take care of their self and their own. If you're not bilingual, you got nothing coming. How long have you been homeless? About a week. And how does that feel to just suddenly be on the streets? It hurts. Have, did you have any idea of what it was like to be homeless before you were your home, homeless no, yourself? No, I did not. What? Oh, where do you sleep at night? I sleep in my car. And uh, is that difficult? Or? Very difficult. It's cold. You get hungry. Sometimes you can't eat for a couple days because there's nothing out there to eat. And, and, and I'm not a thief. And I'm not going to steal. Anything. If you're living in a car, is is affording gas a real issue? Yeah, I've got no gas right now. I'm stranded. And so you're just uh, stuck until you can get some gas. Yeah. And do uh, you even have like something to put gas in your car with? Uh, I'll go get a gallon jug of water, pour the water, drink the water, or pour it out, whatever I got to do, and then use that to get the gas. I've been homeless since June 5th of this year. To say that there was a learning curve um, was an understatement. I, I knew sort of where things were, but I didn't know what the, the transition was from okay, I'm homeless now, what do I actually do? And one of the first things you have to do is you have to go through an intake here as well as at the shelter. Both of them are some, somewhat the same, but they, the rules are slightly different. And um, then after that, you have to go through, get put on food stamps, get an expedited hearing. When you go through it and you have no money, it's a whole lot easier. It's like, okay, um, show up, um, show up on Friday, and we'll have your expedited hearing. It's like, really? <laughs> and then they sit you down. You have to show them tax return or any bank statement that shows you have exhausted all your funds um, so that you can sign up for food stamps. Now that I'm signed up for food stamps, I basically, until I get an income or I get off the streets, I get food stamps. So, are the current facilities and projects in place right now, of which there are numerous ones, uh, enough to tackle the problem in our county? No, there's not enough. 
right now to tackle the problem to serve 3,800 homeless individuals. Um, we have a limited number of emergency shelter beds, transitional housing beds, and permanent supportive housing beds. Um, there we have a large number of homeless with mental illness, which require ongoing case management services. And um, we have limited funding for case management and the permanent housing units that would support them. So uh, we don't have uh, complete yeah. services and housing for everybody. It's hard to sleep because part of what you're doing when you go through your 30 days is you have to draw a number to see if you're going to be able to stay. And the rule is low number stays, high number goes out. And usually it's a high number, anything over 100, you're out on the streets. And, you and they do this like a random drawing? It's a random drawing. And we, we all call it the lottery. And it's not a lottery you want to win. Um, there was a period uh, during the summer of three weeks where I literally kept drawing the same number. And I got to the point where of saying I wanted to have the number 129 tattooed to my head because that was the number I kept drawing. San Luis Obispo County has a 10-year plan to end homelessness. It has seen some success, but budget cuts have made its work difficult. Um, you know, they have to balance so many priorities. It, it's hard um, for, to determine where money would come from in order to, to fund another program. We do plan to apply for more grants as they become available every year. We, well, there's what's called bonus funds right now under uh, one existing program that we manage. And as those continue to become available, we're going to keep applying for those grants to increase our stock of ho housing for homeless. One of the main homeless support service providers on the Central Coast is the Prado Day Center in San Luis Obispo. The center provides hot meals, a laundry service, showers, a play area for children, computers, and job and housing referrals. According to Friends of the Prado Day Center, more than 4,000 people visited the center in August of 2009. Early mornings are very busy here at the Prado Day Center. I wish you could smell what uh, I'm smelling, because right over here is the city's sewage and chemical treatment plants. Society as a whole, the city doesn't sort of has relegated the homeless to one little section of town and basically out of sight, out of mind. And they always point to the homeless that are living out on the streets on a daily basis, most of whom are basically heroin and meth addicts. It's not fair to point to the ones that are actually in the shelter as the problems because most of us are trying to get off the streets as fast as we can. The only problem we're having is when you apply for a job, people will see the addresses you put down on your applications and they'll say, oh, he's homeless. And I can honestly say it's been harder to find jobs. I've been turned down for more jobs in this town than I care to think about because um, people hear that I'm homeless and they think I'm useless. Like what kind, What was the most surprising thing you've learned about living in the uh, living in the streets? Uh, how the PD likes to harass people, and just you know, just because of your situation, they think they can take advantage of you. They, they want to drive you out of their community because it's a, it's an eyesore to them. It's it's a problem to them. Instead of helping a person, they'd rather try and get you out of their community. They uh, face being harassed a and lot. Like, like harassed how? Like being arrested for things? Yeah, or? they uh, hang out with signs, you know, I want I, that say, I like to work, I mm -hmm. need some food. Mm -hmm. uh, they, uh, police come by and ask them to move. Actually, the park rangers are always asking them to move from this area to that area. Even if they have permissions to hang out at Bonds or Safeways or, what, you know, whatever store they're at, Fuco. Normally they have permission, but uh, the police will come and harass them and tell them to move. And if they're uh, drinking to stay warm, they get a ticket, which they can't pay. And a lot of them have a lot of tickets. I mean, they'd rather go to jail than be homeless or rather work. Um, I did. I had two run-ins. Um, 
when I was actually sleeping in my car. Uh, they pulled up in the middle of the night, and of course I'm, you know, dead asleep in my vehicle. And they're like, what are you doing? And I'm like, uh, sleeping in my car. <laughs> and they're like, well, you're going to have to move. So I, I found, you know, other places to go that I knew wouldn't be patrolled as bad and, you know, neighborhoods that I didn't think people would call. Just very strange thing to have happen and, you know, I was embarrassed, you know, it's, it's not a normal thing to have, you know, happen in your life. You have to explain to the police that you're, you know, sleeping in your car, you know, but. But even like you, when you go to jail, you basically, they're, they're going to think you're guilty. They're going to lock you up and you're going to have to prove your innocence. And that's basically just the opposite of what America is. And it gets worse every day. When I was back in jail, the razors were that big. I watched the guy sit there, looked like he was on, uh, what was that, the Predator. Mm -hmm. And he wasn't dry shaven. It was just basically, just because it was so dull and so small. But he was clean shaven. I'm just surprised his skin wasn't wore out, but yeah. And I, and I, uh, I saw a couple guys slashed with razor blades because they gave the, the adult sizes. And that's what they use them for weapons. They use them for shaving and they use them for weapons. I'm glad they got those little razors now. I really am. By uh, I thank you, good Lord, because I almost had one used on me just for talking. I asked the local police department about these accusations of harassment. They said they try not to be confrontational, but must respond if someone files a complaint. Are, the, are gangs a real problem if you're homeless? Uh, yeah, they're a problem if you're homeless. But the homeless, most of them stay away from the gang-infested areas. They uh, know better. The story is the same everywhere. People just don't want to deal with homeless people. The homeless are chased out at every turn. But there are those who want to help these people get back on their feet. The New Times is a local weekly newspaper that came up with the radical idea to help people in need. Where did the New Times staff come up with the idea for the homeless project? Um, the homeless project, it was, it was actually kind of an interesting complicated story in that um, the news editor, Colin Wrigley, and I were sort of trying to figure out with regards to our role at the newspaper, to what extent, you know, we had an impact on the community and to what extent we, we could increase our impact on the community. So we were kind of identifying how can we feel like we're, we're really making a, a positive contribution here, not just, you know, telling people what's happening, which, which is terribly important, but also possibly influencing it um, and you know we were kind of talking about that and I mean just if you walk around downtown San Luis Obispo you will encounter at pretty much any time of the day a handful at least of homeless people and it, it's the kind of thing where you don't know how to respond what to do and you might feel helpless um, with regards to your ability to, to take on such you know such a huge kind of endemic problem but um, we realized you know, the newspaper is a resource. It's it's a gift having um, a voice in the community, and and it's a gift that can be used uh, to address this problem. All right, and what um, what is the homeless project? How does that work? So the homeless project, it, it's really simple, actually. Um, we have people who volunteer. They they come into the paper, you know, it's entirely, we, we don't go out into the community and find people or harass them, people come to us. Um, typically, we ask them to come in on Thursdays from 11 to 12 after our office meeting because people are around, but we also make appointments. They come to us, we ask them some very basic, you know, questions about their history, where they come from, what they need, who they are, you know, basically trying to um, just give a human face to you know the person you might walk by on the street and, and you don't know their story but we're trying to to create that story and to um, very simply put that story out for the community in the hopes that someone connects with it and has something to offer that person it's very simple just connecting one person to another um, have you uh, had a lot of success with it have you had a lot of people find what they needed I mean I think obviously uh, depends on how you define success I, I think it has been terribly successful. Uh, generally, I, I don't know, I should know how many profiles we've done. At least two thirds of those people have received often multiple offers from people and, and people will contact us and 
Um, you know, we've had offers of childcare, of uh, temporary housing, of jobs for, for at least two thirds of the people. So, I mean, dep it depends on your measure of success, but I, I consider it. We said from the very beginning, you know, we don't know if this is the right approach. We don't know if we'll help anybody, but if we help one person, then we'll be quite content. And, and we've definitely, in, in my opinion, it's, it's worked for, you know, about two thirds of the people so far. An annual Thanksgiving dinner is just one of many ways the Central Coast Rescue Mission helps the homeless in Santa Barbara and San Luis Obispo counties. They also provide health care, mental health care, and a drug rehab program. They see helping the poor as a Christian duty. I always wanted to do um, something, you know, that you know, help other people to make their lives better. It's such a small thing, you know, serving the meal for special holidays or not. Because some people, they're, you know, uh, they're less fortunate to have what they need to have. So this is one of the uh, things that um, this little volunteer group do to serve the meal for the people to, you know, to fill their needs. Well, it's, it is an ongoing searching for places to help people to recover from events that have taken them by surprise that they can't seem to know what to do about. But I go out and I speak healing to people, just like I feed them food. Do you think that if you're able to pull yourself out, do you think that you'll be changed by this experience? I've always never looked down on somebody for their situation or what, you know, I look at the person for the person who they are, I've always been that way. And it just makes me know when I get back on my feet and things are rolling the way they used to be, I know where I need to focus on donating money. I have looked into doing um, stuff like nursing and I haven't been called to be a nurse. I have relatives who are nurses, love what they're doing, but it's not my niche. I'd love to find where my niche is, but to do that, I have to get off the streets. It's one of those you really can't judge a book by its cover kind of a thing. You know, you could look at anybody and, and really not know their living situation, you know. Um, homeless people are not just, you know, bums on the street. They're not just transients that, you know, choose to be there or are, are on drugs or, you know, you don't know what people's stories could be, you know, it could be me. Thank you.